Hey, it's me again. So today's been pretty cool so far. I got up fairly early. I played some Guitar Hero. My good friend Jen from work came over. We hung out and talked for like four straight fucking hours about just whatever was on our mind, which was pretty cool. Jen's a cool girl. I ran around my house and filmed random little clip bits of my Project for Awesome video in various parts of my house. And then I spent the last three hours editing it together. This is going to take fucking forever. My goal is to kind of keep, try and keep them around five minutes or so. Um, like I said, five minutes or so, because I think I don't really think I should take any more time out of your day than five minutes. I don't, I don't have to give all you guys five minutes. But So tomorrow, um, if you are not part of it, start looking around for the Project for Awesome thumbnails. You'll see them. They all look similar. Um, it's Koya. I'm kind of glad I did it because I feel like I don't ever do anything useful and worthwhile in contributing to society. Cool. Um, one of the things that came up with Jen that I realized I haven't talked about on my video blog yet is sex. More like I'm going to talk about sexuality. I'm not going to actually talk about sex. Sorry, no wank stories for you. Yes, that's right. I'm a pervert. I like to tie people up and hurt them and do bad things to them. I occasionally like to have bad things done to me too. That can be fun. All right, maybe I do look like a pervert with the whole shaved head and the big beard thing. But yeah, I, I've accepted it and embraced it. And I think most people who are have realized that too. As long as it's done in a, you know, a non-crazy manner by intelligent people like you can do a lot of things to people and have a lot of fun that, that might seem ridiculously unsafe nothing's 100 percent safe driving your car is probably more dangerous than engaging in bdsm activities most of the time uh things i want to point out about being into the kink slash pervy lifestyle whatever one it's it's not a choice for me i've tried to have normal straight up uh not kinky relationships and it doesn't work i'm sorry since this is youtube and it's not an entirely explicit site let's just say that i had um rather graphic fantasies as a child about what i later found out were more bdsm type activities so i've been a lifelong pervert pretty cool huh i don't think you really have a choice in the matter i didn't decide one day that i like this and that i can just decide to stop liking it that's just how it is for me um it's something that is is a part of me and a part of my my sexuality which i think everyone's sexuality is a part of their personality and humanity this kind of leads me to a second point i should point out i am a heterosexual male why do i support the uh the lbgt community the lesbian gay uh bisexual and transgender transgender community that's not something they have a choice of either you know you don't wake up one day and decide you know what i think i'm gonna be bi today you know what i think i'm gonna be gay today you know, I think I'm going to be transgender. That's not something you have a choice in. I think just like being kinky, you have a choice in how far you will let yourself accept it and take, take it into you and become a part of you. Not take it into you, that's not the right word. But how much you will accept it and act on it. I don't think it's healthy or fair or right for anyone to repress anything like that within themselves. So therefore, I guess you don't really have a choice, but... You, you kind of do. Either you're choosing to open yourself up to possible ridicule and all the stuff that goes with being any of those things, um, or you're choosing to just keep it all inside and, and be unhappy inside with who you are and, and lie to yourself. Neither one is necessarily a good choice, but you know, obviously that's for every person to make. That's why I support those communities. Um, the second reason I support them is it's the old saying that's gone around the internet where you know they came for this person, they came for that person, they came for this group, and when they came for me, there was no one left to help me. Um, you know, if you let people attack those people, uh, if you let large groups and religious groups and politicians strip away. Um, you know, gay people's rights and not give them rights, then what's to say that once they're done with those people and have taken care of them, that they're not going to turn to me and say, hey, you don't fit the norm either. You're a sexual deviant. You don't like the stuff that's normal. You should be liking this stuff. And when I say, well, fuck you, I don't like that stuff. This is what I like. Then what happens to me? Um, a few notes about BDSM, kink, whatever, that I always should point out slash share with everyone is that, one, uh, Safe, sane, consenting, those are the three cardinal rules of BDSM's SSC. Safe. You can't be 100% safe, like I said. Um, so I think it's it's more not being stupid. If you're playing by yourself, don't hang yourself from the rafters with a rope with no way to get down because you like the thrill, because that's not going to end well. Um, also, if you think someone seems like a super psycho, creepy motherfucker who's going to hurt you, then don't do stuff with them. Two, sane. Use your fucking head. Um, if something sounds like a really bad idea, um, it probably is. But basically, if it doesn't look like it's going to fit in that orifice, don't put it there. If you think that hitting someone with that thingy is going to really, really fuck them up, don't do that. Consensual. If someone doesn't like that stuff, don't force them. Forcefulness or being forced is kind of a, a strong theme in a lot of that. Um, the idea of being tied up and have things done to you and that sort of thing, or tying someone up and doing things to them, is very strong. There's a lot of power exchange involved. There's an awful lot of power exchange going on, so you're, um, you know, one person is 
taking control of another and that can um, I think be a very powerful experience. If you can find someone who you trust to engage in that sort of play with, I think it starts things off at least in the physical sense on a lot, for me personally on a lot um, a lot deeper level because instead of just casual fucking which is just you know normal biological copulation from the bottom point of view if you can find someone who you trust enough to do that sort of thing to you then obviously um, that's a pretty strong bond with that person and the same thing goes if you find someone who was willing to trust from the top point of view if you find someone who you're willing who's willing to trust you to do that sort of things and you don't abuse it then I think that's a very powerful thing so I actually plan on doing a lot more about some of that stuff uh, talking about kink and that sort of thing among the other things I'm interested in, obviously um, at some point in time so we'll see how that goes um, that is about it I am kind of hyper right now if you can't tell um, so yeah bye